Deontay Wilder is being lined up to face WBC number 12 contender Eric Molina in his first defence of the WBC world title. Let me make my thoughts on this fight clear. This is the most horrific matchup for a world heavyweight title. It is disgustingly poor. Terrible, terrible fight. It was recently rumoured that Eric Molina was going to fight heavyweight prospect 22-year-old Joseph Parker. I did a video on that fight. Potential thoughts on Eric Molina versus Joseph Parker. And I was less than excited about that matchup, with my suggestion being that Joseph Parker could potentially be moved more ambitiously than facing Eric Molina. I was slightly surprised that fight didn't get made, because it seemed like it was pretty much a done deal. But now we understand why. It's because he got offered a better target against Deontay Wilder. Now, Eric Molina, and I keep heavyweight rankings, Eric Molina is not somebody who I would consider a top 40 heavyweight. It is highly debatable whether he could even be included as a top 50 heavyweight. If we look at Eric Molina's resume, one thing is clear, that Eric Molina has not beaten a top 50 heavyweight. The best opponent he's beaten, Grano, he has not beaten anyone I would consider a top 50 heavyweight. The only time he has even fought someone who is top 25, top 30 level in Chris Ariola, he got knocked out in the very first round. That's not the only time Eric Molina has been knocked out either. He got knocked out again, uh, actually on debut. So, this is a guy who Chris Ariola KO'd in one round. The same Chris Ariola who got KO'd by Vermeijn Stavern, who just got hammered by Deontay Wilder. I mean, this is a terrible matchup. This guy... I'm not an Anthony Joshua fan. Anthony Joshua is genuinely more of a proven heavyweight than Eric Molina. Yeah, Eric Molina has not beaten anybody to merit a title, world title fight. Quite frankly, I would confidently suggest... I could pick 10 heavyweights from the UK alone who I think would stand a very good chance of beating Eric Molina. And I could probably name 50 heavyweights I would rather see Deontay Wilder face than Eric Molina. It's that, that bad. You know, this is a terrible fight. Um, Eric Molina is one of the most slow, plodding, one-paced heavyweights you'll ever see. Look at his recent fight against Rafael Zambano Love. The guy AJ is fighting this weekend, actually. I am. Eric Molina sort of slowly snails his way around the ring, throwing a weak, slow, predictable, lazy jab. You know, it really is painful to watch. Painful to watch. Quite frankly, I've seen better hand speed in local Ladbrokes. You know, this is this is not an A level heavy, uh, A level heavyweight whatsoever. We're talking about a guy. You know, Deontay Wilder's just smashed someone up with poor foot speed. But the main Stavern looks like you're saying bulk compared to this guy. Um, John T. Wilder, known as a puncher against a guy who's been knocked out early in two fights. There, there's no way. I mean, in my mind, if they fought a hundred times, it's hard to see Eric Molina winning once. Uh, you know, he, he's that poor. And he has got a deceptively high knockout ratio. But that's because his, um, you know, the level of opposition he's been in with is so poor. If you watch that Rafael Zambano love fight, which was his last fight, it, you know, it's clear, even though he's the bigger man, he, he doesn't carry any real power at a world level. Um, yeah, as I say, I genuinely could pick up 50 heavyweights. You know, 50 heavyweights, I would rather see Deontay Wilder face. Um, yeah, from the UK, I think Huey Fury absolutely schools Eric Molina. I think Anthony Joshua, obviously, would destroy him. Dillian White, Gary Cornes, David Price, you know, all of these guys you're picking over, uh, Eric Molina at present. Um, yeah, it's an absolutely woeful, woeful fight. And I can't see it going any other way, really, than a Deontay Wilder knockout. And even if I'm wrong, even if Eric Molina shocks the world, it's still a terrible fight. 
because we shouldn't exist in a world where a guy who is this poor can fight for the world title. You know, you shouldn't be able to glide your way to a world title without having had to fight for it and without having to face any level of opposition. You know, it's just not equitable. It's not fair given the calibre of all people out there who don't get to fight for the world title. So even if Eric Molina shocks the world and knocks Deontay Wilder out, I'm maintaining my point of view. I feel genuinely that strong about it. Um, and I can't see it going any other way, really, than Deontay Wilder jamming his head off and the first time he lands that big right hand, knocking him spark out. You know, Deontay Wilder is a guy who is known for his padded record. But let me tell you this. If Bermain Stavern fights Eric Molina... I'm picking Stavern by early knockout. Let me go further. Who is Deontay Wilder's second best win? If Malik Scott faces Eric Molina, I predict Malik Scott schools Eric Molina. I predict Malik Scott runs rings around Eric Molina. You know, either wins every single round in a white wash or stops him late. Who's Deontay Wilder's third best opponent? Right, I'm going to say it. I think Audley Harrison beats Eric Molina. I really genuinely do. I think Audley's got more skill. He's more technical. He's more tricky. And he carries enough power to take out someone like Molina. You know, quite frankly, Jason Gavern, on a good day, you wouldn't rule out to beat Molina. Um, you know, it, it, it really is that bad a fight. I hate to keep pressurising it, but it is that bad a fight. The only possible, possible reason for being easy on Deontay Wilder here, if we're being really, really charitable, is that Vladimir Klitschko is about to fight Tyson Fury. If an agreement has been reached behind the scenes that Deontay Wilder will face the winner, I can understand why he would want an easy night's work. And I think that makes business sense. Yeah, if you've got that fight, which is going to be a monstrous fight, either a Klitschko unification or against Tyson Fury, I can understand why you'd want a fight that not only that you're guaranteed to win, but a fight that isn't going to take you 12. That's not going to lead to a horrible battle, you know, where the risk of injury, the risk of war is minimised. You want to take care of business, get your obligations out of the way, sell a few tickets, have a bit of a homecoming, and keep yourself in shape for the big fight to come. I get that. If that's the case, if that's been agreed, it's still a disgustingly poor fight, but I can understand why you'd be inclined to make such a disgustingly poor fight. Um, but if that's not the case, if that hasn't been agreed, this is absolutely terrible. I mean, people criticise Vladimir Klitschko for poor fights, but, you know, Francesco Pianetta destroys this guy. Genuinely, he's that poor. Um, and I think, you know, with, with Deontay Wilder, I'm disappointed because I've been such a sceptic of Deontay Wilder. I've criticised him every step of the way. And I heaped praise on him after the Bermain Stavern fight. I was so impressed. Yeah, but Mane Stavone is a guy who at the time I genuinely considered to be a top 5 heavyweight. And I still consider probably to be a top 10 heavyweight. Really, really impressed by Wilder. He showed determination, heart and skill that I didn't think he had. And he proved himself to me that night. But if after all that he's going to go back to fighting this level of opponent. And if we can expect a long run of him defending the belts against, uh, you know... The Chris Ariolas of this world. You, you know what I mean. Those kind of heavyweights who are there or there about. But, you know, Deontay Wilder, Fred Quendo. Deontay Wilder, Chris Ariola. Deontay Wilder, Manuel Char. You know, if we've got that to look forward to, then, you know, I'm not a happy man. Let me know your thoughts on Deontay Wilder and Merlina. I'm keen to discuss... I'm interested to hear from anyone who disagrees with me. Thanks for watching.